there is nothing like finding your niche. I mean, you might have to go through about 15 different things to find it, but once you have found it, there is a particular attachment you have to it that no one can reverse. As a matter of fact, in the words of today's guest, I want to die empty because she plans to pour everything into this. Not the jar, the product, Native Candles. I want to introduce you to today's Pivot Series featuring Tamara of Native Candles. How are you, Tamara? Good. I'm feeling really good this morning. Happy to be here with you. Fantastic. We are so happy to have you on this series because I think you epitomize what this series is about. You mm -hmm. go through mm -hmm. a number of steps in life. You go through even a number of thought processes mm -hmm. in life. And then one day you're like, hey, life. You're not working out for me the way we had planned. Mm -hmm. So let's skip back to the beginning. What was life growing up like for Tamara? <clears throat> my household was very animated. First of all, there were five of us in the house. Um, so it was my parents, my sister, and my grandmother. A house full of strong personalities. Mm. Um, but we made it work. And I think the most notable thing for me, we're in summer now, so my mind goes back to summers. We didn't go to any camps, my sister and I. We didn't go to any camps or anything like that. We were home with my grandmother. Mm. And she got us involved in some of everything in the house. So if she was making some sort of cake, and at that time, she was making cake from scratch. Ah. So it was enough blend and nothing to, to, <laughs> to beat up these eggs and sugar that you got to stir this thing to this, you know, to these sugar granules dissolve and everything. Um, the butter excursion. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, if she's making, I think I, I learned how to cook with my grandmother. Going to Cheapside Market with her early on morning. She used to do sauce every Saturday morning. Mm. I still eat sauce. Good girl. <laughs> um, but those are growing up for me was fun. The the gap that we grew up in was full of children. So it was outside the bicycles, everybody screaming at one another, everybody <laughs> racing these bicycles. Um, and then, you know, I, on Saturday evenings especially, like our house, the front door would be open and me and all these children from, you know, in the, in the neighborhood and my, my sister, at that time, Saturday evening TV had good TV. Yes, though. <laughs> from two o'clock with like the A team and at four o'clock it was Bay Watch mm -hmm. and then it was the five o'clock show all the way down. You had the half an hour for the news and then straight into things like you know, tour of duty, Falcon Crest is showing my age. Here. Good time. But, <laughs> good time. But that was it. So my, my childhood was good. My Excellent. Childhood was very, very good. So, I mean, that seems like a pretty positive start. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, you know, what could possibly have derailed? I mean, she had fun. She learned how to cook. She knew how to negotiate and haggle in a market. She's <laughs> ready for life. No, no. Um, I did everything that I thought. Or you were told that you should do. Mm -hmm. and, okay, so let me say straight up front. I am not saying do not do this. Right. So I went to school. I learned. I learned pretty well. I went to university twice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's degrees. Yeah. Um, and I even got the job. You know, and I thought, okay, I'm set up really good to be successful. And so this is what success looks like, right? Right. Yeah. No. No? <laughs> no. No. Um, there came a point where those things lost currency for me. The degrees, um, all the years of work experience and stuff lost currency. And it was due to many changes happening um, in the workforce, many changes happening in the particular sector that I was working in at the time. And it just wasn't working for me anymore. And as a matter of fact, I think my story is more about opportunity. I couldn't find an opportunity. And after fighting and fighting to, have to find one, found out I have to create my own.
up a little bit because truthfully, somebody out there is watching this, preparing for their next semester <laughs> and saying to themselves, what does she mean her degrees lost currency? I knee deep into this now and I have a plan. What does she mean this could lose currency? First of all, stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> um, I personally, I think I had the cart before the horse in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, I can only speak for me. But qualifications don't determine who you become. So you might study accounts. You tell yourself you're going to be an accountant. Mm -hmm. Or you may study economics. You tell yourself you're going to be an economist. Right? Um, if I knew then what I knew now, that what you study should really not determine who you are or where you go. It should actually sharpen what you have on the inside of you. Mm. So you can study accounts and be a business owner. It's just that you have a really solid knowledge of the, of the financial side of business. And but how it, money works. And how money works okay. and how you can leverage it to get where you want or to make the business what you want. Uh, if you study, for example, marketing, does not mean that you have to be a marketing specialist. Mm -hmm. You can you can go into anything actually, but with that knowledge of marketing and how understanding people and what people want and how to speak to them, how to position, how to create a concept, let that sharpen the gift that is on the inside of you. And I unfortunately don't think that that is something that happens a lot. You're not really taught to find out what's on the inside of you, but you are taught go to school and use what you learn to become something. And it really should be the other way around, to me, my opinion. So basically what you're saying is there was kind of a hole mm -hmm. that had not been filled, that you were more or less filling with degrees and qualifications, certificates, jobs, accolades. I do not know how I missed I was creative. But, <laughs> I mean, it was glaring. <laughs> it was glaring. Like, I like to cook. I like making home. I mean, like... The house will get changed really three or four times. Okay, you're year. one of those. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too attached to this couch being no. in this corner. <laughs> Colors and textures and smells and like everything is the environment and this size picture versus that size one. And then with food, like I don't cook boring. Uh, you know, certain tastes got to go with other things. And if you're going to do this and then we can drink this with it. I even like, you know, like crafts like i would just find when i get bored i would find different crafts to me so i do not i like theater like love theater oh i can give you two tickets to phantom of the opera and you're gone please and thank you <laughs> <laughs> do it for grantly is a production of fortress funds managers you can listen to all our episodes in all the good places podcasts are available including soundcloud google and apple podcasts or on our website fortressfund.com I like theater, I like music, um, I like the arts. I do not know how I miss I was creative. Those are things that I probably just did thinking this is what I enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, In my spare time, yes, from please. real life. And as soon as I get bored, I will go tinker. My aunt will tell you as soon as I get bored, the first place I can head is a kitchen. And then when I tired of the kitchen, I go making something else or changing around something. So I, I think I'm very hands-on too. I think I like experiencing things with my hands and I like creating. That's, that's, I think that's the unique thing about me and the arts. I love creating. So I like picking down things and trying to figure out how this works, how it doesn't work and putting it together, putting it back together mm -hmm. in my own way. Um, I do not know how I miss that, but I think I've always been creative. Equally strong academically, mm -hmm. but yeah, actually on most, most psychometric tests, you would think I'm bipolar. Um, <laughs> yeah, for how I show up strong logically, so, uh, strong conceptually, but I think I have been, I think that happened because I was suppressing, you know, the conceptual side, so. Well, when I look at how people even use the term entrepreneur, mm -hmm. sometimes I get the feeling like entrepreneur is the secondary activity mm -hmm. to other things. Like nobody uses the term businessman yeah. or businesswoman, which we high, we have high up on our list of priorities. Yeah. When we think entrepreneur, we think, well, 
bless her heart, she couldn't get a job. Yes. So <laughs> she used her talents to, to, to perhaps do candles. To, to make a life, right? Yes. But there are people who have entire empires built on candles. Yeah. So why do we, in your opinion, use the word entrepreneurship in the way we do? I think a lot of people think entrepreneurship is hustling, which is mm. something completely different. There are hustlers, mm -hmm. um, but that's not what, you know, building a business is really uh, about. Like, I, I felt it. I've walked into rooms where I would have said, hi, I'm Tamara Gibbs. Oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a development specialist or a development, you know, project development officer or something mm -hmm. like that. Versus, so what do you do? Oh, I make Seneca. Oh. Well, you seem lovely. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you got an old up first, sorry. <laughs> Entrepreneurship doesn't get the respect that I think it ought to get um, yet. Mm -hmm. um, not just in Barbados, I, I think across the region. Right. Um, I think there's some wanting to get away from manual work based on our history. Mm hmm. Uh, thinking that it is lesser or perhaps even lower class, but I would say that there is still some sort of shame or Yeah, let's call it shame mm -hmm. Associated with having to work with your hands or work in the field mm -hmm. or you know that kind of thing But honestly, it is the most freedom you can experience mm -hmm. it really allows you to grow personally like it is like only like I didn't even get started on this yet right I am I ain't only nothing yet <laughs> you and love me in a year you think you love me no I do I love you <laughs> I very much right now you can love me in a year do I have to prepare no. room in my heart yes, <laughs> <laughs> right uh, I feel like if I just have this whole flood of things to come since I've started doing this I have never mm -hmm. gotten back from any job and I do not know why I did not come to this sooner. Um, yeah, I, I I think I bought into that whole thing about, you know, the degrees of the way forward and the real success story and that sort of thing that I never really had time to or thought about, you know, working with the hands or picking up a trade as a real way forward. I have to say my parents have been entirely supportive though. Mm -hmm. Both my parents are entrepreneurs. so. There wasn't any steering me away from entrepreneurship in my house. Right. They were very supportive of anything. Right. Okay. Um, that I did. It is just me. I just saw. I don't know where I learned that. Actually, when you spoke about that, I thought to myself, I never actually put it that way. That the relationship we have with our ancestral past, yeah. with our history has probably tried to steer us away from being outside and working with our hands because it's very reminiscent of a dark time in our history. Mm -hmm. And perhaps the onus is on us and those who are guiding us mm -hmm. to redefine the relationship we have with our hands because, but for the inhumane treatment and the lack of remuneration, what exactly were we doing that was so wrong? Mm -hmm. We were building industry, we built an island, we built an empire. There are so many hawkers that send their kids to college. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that from a trade, what if the child had come back and taken that business to the second generation, the second level, and mm -hmm. it became like a mini mart? Or, or a string of mini marts. Correct. With time, you know, yeah. it grows, it gets better, but there was there's something existent, and again, it's not just in Barbados. No, of course not. It's all across the Caribbean where you think that your child doing better mm -hmm. or the let's not let's not put it on parents because all parents may not feel that way mm -hmm. but there is a thought floating around that doing better is staying away from the trades mm -hmm. and it couldn't be further from the truth i've seen i've worked on projects in a past life where i've seen people without any form of formal qualification become millionaires right here in the region thousand errors yeah it is quite possible if you want to head into the bible the bible says first your gift will make a way for you i just don't think we spend enough time figuring out what that gift is tamara 
from Native Candles has invited me back to her kitchen where she cooks it up where the candles are concerned. And she asked me, what fragrances best represent me? Well, I knew right off the bat, pink grapefruit would have to be at the center of that. And then she recommended some oranges and some lemons and limes and all kinds of citrusy goodness. And I'm sure a few secrets she will not divulge. Not mad at her. But she whipped me up what she believed best represented my fragrance. And when I smelled it, whew, this is going to be some good stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, pivoters all, you're going to witness Gaynell's groove today. That's right. Ask for it by name, because when you burn it, I'll be with you all the time. Take that, Coco Chanel. So I'm going to give you this. Okay. There you go. Just pour it in. Just get it. That's good. Ooh, oh. you are you're natural. Mm -hmm. oh, like you said, it's almost like cooking. Right. And just give it a stir. All right. I'm more like a right-handed stir. Mm -hmm. And that's to make sure that the fragrance is going to be evenly distributed. It's chemistry. So you want all the molecules to properly bind to one another. So you have to stir it um, while it's in its liquid form to make okay. sure. Okay. That is balanced. That's good. Good. Because I did it counterclockwise <laughs> and clockwise because it must be balanced. <laughs> And you go ahead and pour into your jar. <gasps> oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. It smells good. Drop. Drop. You know what that is? That's the end of the candle that you don't want to admit is gone, but it gone. But I'm giving you every last drop. Like one more, one more, one more. To center it allows you to put the wick in. Mm-hmm. And keep it centered. Okay. While the wax is drying. Mm -hmm. Let's okay. make sure no cool. water gets in Actually, there. Actually, you can see little bits there because I, I did not have a clean pour. Pivoters, I cannot thank you enough for the support you have given not only the series, but especially our entrepreneurs and business women. But I have seen the reaction to Native Candles, and you know what? Y'all reacted exactly the way I did. You must have them. You must have them in abundance. So follow Tamara on Instagram, Native Candles. You cannot miss it. You can practically smell it through the screen and make yourself a part of the candle community because that's what we want. This community to grow and to be a big part of what's happening in our homes, in the Caribbean, in our lives. Until the next series, thank you so much for watching.